Hey there, GED math students or any math student that is watching this video. In this video, I'm going to go over the difference between coordinate and slope. There's a lot of confusion between these two concepts. So let's start with the coordinate. Coordinate just means direction or movement. So if you were taking a test and you were asked to find the coordinate of this point, point A, you need to figure out how many units horizontally and vertically you need to move to get to this point. So let me explain. You start here at the origin and you say to yourself, how many units do I need to move on the x-axis? Remember, this is your x-axis and this is your y-axis. How many units do I need to move on my x-axis horizontally? And then how many units do I need to move on my y-axis vertically to get to point A. That's a coordinate. It indicates movement. So let's do that. I start here. On the x-axis, I need to move three units horizontally. So a coordinate is always x comma y. So I moved three units to the left from the origin. And then how many units do I need to move in the y direction? Well, I need to move two units down. So the coordinate of point A is negative 3, negative 2. And I always suggest that you move horizontally first and then vertically next. And that's my suggestion. It makes it easier. Let's try B. What would the coordinate of B be? Well, we start at the origin here. How many units do I move in the horizontal or x direction? 1, 2, right? And then I need to move how many units vertically in the y direction? One, two, three, right here. So the coordinate of point B is two, three. Again, I can't stress this enough that coordinates show direction horizontally, horizontally and vertically. Now let's go to slope. This is where the confusion comes in. Slope measures steepness, not direction necessarily. So to find the slope, what you do is you take the change of y divided by the change in x. Some people call this the rise divided by the run. That's another way to look at it. That's fine where your change in y is your rise and your change of x is your run. So here's how you would deal with the slope. Let's say you're taking a test and you need to find the slope of line AB. Remember, slope indicates steepness. It measures steepness. So what I do is I make a slope triangle. I connect point A and point B with a slope triangle. And there's many ways to make that slope triangle. I always like to start at my farthest left point right here, A. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up this way. And then I'm going to move this way to connect it to B, like so. So I moved up and then this way. These arrows indicate direction. Now, there's other ways to do this. You can actually do your slope triangle like this if you wanted to. You could do it this way. But for my videos, I'm going to stick with going up and then to the right. Again, there's more than one way to do it. I think it's really important that you start with your farthest left point and then move to your to the point to the right of it. So if you notice, A is to the left of B. That's why I started with A. So I figure out what is my rise or my change in Y. Well, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units. So my change of Y is 5. And then what's my change of X or my run? You can call this your run. Well, that would be 1, 2, three, four, five. It's also five. That's fine. So my run or my change in x happen to be the same in this problem. It's five this way and five this way. So it's five 
change in y divided by 5, change in x, and that's your slope. Now you can reduce this 5 divided by 5 is 1. There you go. That's a 1. So don't get these two confused. The coordinate indicates direction. It's x comma y. The slope is kind of, you're thinking a little bit backwards maybe. It's change of y over change of x. So make sure you see the difference between those two. It will save you some big headaches when you're taking a math test. Let's just look at one more example I have here. Let me go to the next screen. For this problem, why don't you pause the video and go ahead and find the coordinate of A and the coordinate of B. Well, welcome back. Well, here's point A right here. So let's start here at the origin, and I have to move to the left or horizontally five units. So it's negative five because I moved to the left. So negative five is my x value. And then how many units do I move vertically in the vertical direction or the y direction? Well, let's see, that would be two, right? One, two, and it's over here. So the y value is 2. So the coordinate of a is negative 5 comma 2. Hope you got that right. Let's look at b. Let's look at b. Here's b. We start here at the origin. I need to move 4 units in the horizontal direction or the x direction. And then 2 units down, so it's negative 2. So 4, negative 2. That's the coordinate of b. Hope you got that right. Go ahead now, pause the video, and find the slope of AB. Welcome back. Remember, the slope is the change of Y over change of X, also known as the rise over the run. Right? Well, let's figure this out. I'm going to connect these two points using a slope triangle. Again, there's more than one way to do it. But I'm going to go ahead and start with point A. I always like to start with my farthest left point, reading the line from left to right. By the way, you should notice, too, that this line from left to right is slanting down. So I know the slope is going to be negative right away. So let's make our slope triangle. I'll start here. And then I'll move this way. So I move down, and then I move to the right. So how many units did I move down on my slope triangle? Well, let's see, that's one, two, three, four units. Since I move down, it'll be negative four. And then what about in this direction? Why don't you count how many units that is? Let's see, that's one, two, I'll do it this way actually, one, two, three, four. Let's do that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine units to the right. Since I move to the right, it's positive. You can put that positive sign in if you want to. So the change of y is negative four, or my rise is negative four, over my run. This way is nine. That's my change of x. So my change of x, or my run, is nine. There you go. So the slope is negative 4 ninths. It'll probably be written this way in a textbook with the negative sign smack dab in the middle of the fraction. You can position that negative sign wherever you would like to. Let's go ahead and look at one more problem. Let's look at this problem here. What's different about it? And, and by the way, what I ultimately want to do here is find the slope of this line. But we'll go over coordinates as well. What's different here? Hopefully you can see there's no points drawn in on the line. Now a couple things when I'm finding the slope. I know it's going to be positive because the line slants from left to right upwards. So you always read a line from left to right. Slants upward. So it's going to be positive slope. But again, there's no points on the line. So what you can do is you can draw in points. But when you're drawing in points, you want to make sure they fall 
where the grid lines touch each other, like right here. If I were to draw something like this, right? The grid lines touch each other right here. See that? You want to pick points on the line itself, right on this line, where the grid lines cross. So let's let's go ahead and do that. Let's see, I'm going to read from left to right, and let's just kind of go up here. And boom, here's a nice point where the grid lines cross right here. So I'll put a point there. And then I'll keep going. It's kind of hard to tell sometimes, but here's another nice convenient point where the grid lines cross each other. And now I have two points. Now it's very similar to what I did before. I'm going to call this point A. I'll call this point B. So let's find the coordinates first just for practice, even though the ultimate goal here is to find the slope. So go ahead and pause the video and find the coordinates of point A and point B. Welcome back. Well, let's see. Remember, it's always x comma y, right? So the coordinate of point A is going to be what? What do you think? It's a little different because it falls exactly on the x-axis. So how many units do I move here in the horizontal direction? I move in the horizontal direction, there should be a negative sign there. I move in the horizontal direction, left two units, so this is negative two, so my x value is negative two, comma. What's the y value? How many units do I move vertically or up and down to get to this point? I don't have to move at all, I'm already on the point. I don't need to move up or down at all, it falls right on the x-axis. So my vertical movement is zero, so my y value is zero. And for the B value, well, let's see, or for the B coordinate, see, I'd have to move from the origin five units horizontally to the right, right here, and one, two, three units up or vertically. Let me say that one more time. I had to move five units horizontally, so five. I might have said vertically before, and then one, two, three units vertically. So that's my y value. So those are the coordinates. Hope you got that right. Let's go ahead and do the slope now. Uh, I always like to write this out. So the slope is the change of y over change of x or rise over run. Let's make our slope triangle. So I'm going to start with my farthest left point. And I'll move this way. So I move up and then to the right. And let's see how many units in the vertical direction did I move? That's my change of y. I moved one, two, three. So this is three. My change of y is vertical. And then my change of x is this length here. It's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So my change of x is 7. So my slope is 3 7 I can't reduce this. And there you go. So hopefully this video cleared up the difference between coordinate and slope. Have a great day.